So what is the JSP expression language? It's a simple scripting language, a part of the overall JSP tag language and syntax that we've already seen that can be embedded in a JSP file. It allows you to display information from an object that's stored in any of the traditional JSP contexts, such as the page context, the request context, the session, or the application scope. There are facilities to perform basic arithmetic and also perform comparison. The goal with the use of the JSP expression language is to significantly simplify JSP development and cut down on the amount of coding, of actual Java coding, that we're embedding in line with our JSP. Let's look at the syntax of the JSP expression language. JSP expressions are entered with a code block indicated with the curly bracket delimiters and preceded or prefixed with a dollar sign. For example, we see here a, an HTML label of the, with the word price and some space. And following that HTML element, we have uh, some JSP expression language syntax. What this does is it displays, what this particular snippet of code does is display the price attribute of the object called product bean. And this product bean object instance is stored in either the page context, the request, the session, or the application scope. We have not fully qualified where we want to locate this bean. So we're expecting that the system will be able to locate the bean for us with the specific bean instance name, product bean, of course, case sensitive. An expression can also be used as a value for a tag's attribute. And remember that attributes can contain not just string, but complex Java objects. For example, here we see the attribute value assigned for the tag called my tag. And the attribute is actually referencing, the attribute value is actually referencing an object using the JSP expression language syntax. This is a powerful new feature that allows an attribute to accept a full Java object or a complex Java object as its value, where previously only string objects could be supplied as value. Any object not fully qualified for its scope is searched by its name. The system searches for its name in these scopes in this order. So first it will look in the page context, then it will look in the request, then it will look in the session, and then it will look in the application context to try and locate a bean that is not fully defined with its scope in the name of the uh, bean instance or the object instance. The unified expression language. As of JSP 2.1, the JSP version 2.1 specification, which is included in the Java 5 EE specification, the expression language has become part of the unified expression language. This is really the merging of what was separately the JSP 1.0 expression language and Java server faces, or JSF, 1.2 expression language. The unified expression language allows the use of deferred expressions. In other words, traditional JSP expressions are evaluated immediately during the JSP rendering phase. JSF expressions are not necessarily evaluated immediately, as this framework, the JSF framework, has several phases, not just the rendering phase. In this case, the expression uh, evaluation would have to be deferred to the JSF framework. If you want to explicitly defer an expression, you will use the pound symbol here instead of the dollar symbol. And that would explicitly indicate to the system that you want this expression to be deferred until runtime. We won't be looking at the use of deferred expressions. This seems to be a little more of legacy um, uh, information and more used by JSF developers. There are some built-in objects to explicitly define the scope of what you're looking for in your code. 
following are some of the objects that are available by default. There's the request scope, which is a map that contains all of the objects that are contained within the request. There is session scope, and these are case sensitive, so these are actually the instance names. Session scope is a map that contains the objects that are stored, well, in the session context. There is a param attribute, which is a map that contains the URL parameters. Um, only one value per parameter name is available. There is a param values instance, which contains a string array object for every URL parameter. And there's also a header variable, which is a map that contains HTTP header values. With the JSP expression language, we can work easily with arrays and with maps. Elements of an array or a list object can be accessed using the square bracket operator. For example, we see here that we have an object instance called shop cart items, and we're referencing using the square brackets, we're referencing the uh, index position one, which would be the second position uh, traditionally uh, with a zero based index. And we're asking for the value of the quantity property, and we're using expression language to do that. Elements of a map object can be accessed using either the square bracket uh, operator that we've already seen or with the dot notation, the, what they call the extended notation operator. And we would pass to a map the key identifier as maps are essentially key value pairs. So uh, one way to use the expression language in accessing a value in a map is to reference it using the dot notation. Here we see my map dot key identifier. So we would be asking for the value um, in that map as identified by uh, what we provide in key identifier. Or um, doing the same thing using the square bracket notation and in quotes specifying the name of the key that we're trying to access. Here, uh, which you choose just becomes a matter of style and preference. And by style, I mean uh, in some cases you're talking about the style of the design team uh, that you're working on, not necessarily a personal style. Traditional mathematic operators are available in the expression language. So where we see equal equals in our test for equality, we see the exclamation point equals in our test for not equality or non-equal, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. All these operators work the same as in Java, and they return a Boolean value. For example, in the standard tag library, an if tag, here we're testing with the if tag, we're passing a conditional expression if the property of being one is less than the property of being two. So this whole expression using the less than operator is going to evaluate to true or false. And we're using the expression language syntax to ask for from a bean instance called bean one, from a bean instance called bean two, we're asking for properties directly and simply. Other Java arithmetic operators can also be used. For example, we see here the use of the asterisk as the multiplier, the multiplication operator. So let's take a look at a full example of the Java servlet code as well as the JSP code that's going to use our expression language. In the servlet, we see um, creating a new instance of a bean. We have to assume that uh, because traditionally we named Java bean code uh, with the word bean in it. Um, we're looking at product bean code. We call set attribute on the request object to set the product instance in the request scope and then use our servlet code to get a handle to the request dispatcher to forward the request to a JSP. In this case, we're calling product JSP. Then in the product JSP, we can access the request attribute using our expression language. Here we have a very simple label, product ID, and using our expression language with the dollar sign, the curly brackets, we're asking for the ID attribute of the product instance being. Now let's go check and see and experience that this code is actually going to work and follow it through from beginning to end in Eclipse. 
So let's create a simple JSP to demonstrate the use of the JSP expression language and we'll create a simple servlet to call this JSP so we can give ourselves the necessary sanity check. Make sure we understand the syntax and how it works. From the web content folder I'm going to right click and choose new JSP to create my simple JSP. I'll call this JSP demo underscore EL JSP. I'll give myself a title um, when I'm running this to uh, correspond to what it is that I'm trying to do, uh, which is access the request attribute using the expression language. And in my JSP, I'm going to simply write out a label in HTML, employee ID and some space. And here's where I'm going to put the expression language in line in my JSP. Using the dollar sign, using uh, the open bracket, and notice that the tool puts a closing bracket in uh, for me. Some people find that a little frustrating. Um, because they're used to uh, opening and closing their own brackets and the tool is trying to help them. Um, and we're going to access from an object instance called employee, we're going to access a, a, a property value called employee number. Okay. Um, tools give me a little error. I'll try putting in my uh, closing uh, tag and notice the tool is filling it in for me. If I save this, um, you know, I've got an error I can hover over, I can try and troubleshoot it now, or I can try uh, running it. Sometimes this happens with the basic JSP editor that the uh, changes and the content assist is trying to help you. We'll see how it goes. Otherwise, we'll have to go back and uh, fix it. Now I'm going to create a simple servlet right click on my Java package uh, simple servlet go to new choose servlet the package name is filled in for me the servlet name is going to be demo el or expression language I've got my superclass automatically defined from the wizard because I chose to create a servlet and uh, stepping through the wizards, I'm going to choose to stub out or create a skeleton of the do get method. I'm going to keep it simple, just very simple implementation of the do get method in the HTTP servlet interface. The editor opens um, for my Java code, and in my do get method, um, I have in my application, I already have an employee bean Java code. Very simple Java bean with some properties. Employee no, uh, which is the one we're going to be interested in using. First name, middle name, last name, and I've got all my getters and setters in place. No real business logic in this Java bean, but what we do want to see is in terms of case sensitive and the asking for the value of properties by their name is the employee no uh, variable, class variable in my Java bean is the property value that we're requesting in the expression language. So comparing how that syntax works, it's helpful to see um, where the property is actually coming from. So in my script, back to my uh, servlet, I'm going to create a, an instance of that employee Java bean. So of type employee, I'm going to create something called a local variable called amp, and I'm going to instantiate it by calling the constructor on my Java bean new employee. And notice the code is telling me it doesn't know what an employee is, so a simple control shift O to organize imports, and an import statement is automatically added to uh, my Java code for me. Okay, so let's uh, put some values in this uh, object instance EMP. We're going to call the setter. So on the EMP variable, I'm going to call set first 
name. Okay, and I'll set it to my own name because, you know, I'm the leader. And um, close my quotes properly, put the uh, closing line in. And I'm also going to set, I'm going to call the setter on employee number because that's the one we're actually going to render in our JSP. Set, and notice that the, the uh, tool is helping me, now that it knows what an employee is, the tool is actually giving me code assist. I can double click. I can type in um, and provide the string argument to the setter. This will give us the necessary proof that this is flowing through the request object to our JSP and that we're using the JSP expression language uh, to read the variable. So the request object is passed into the get method. So I'm going to call on the request object I'm going to call set, and notice the code is helping me. So for the first argument, name that object instance. In our JSP, we're looking for an object instance named employee. So that's actually what I'm going to name my object instance as I key it on the as an attribute on the request object and I can pass a, a complex object in this case our employee object not just a string object and the value that I'm going to set on the request using set attribute is in fact the whole object EMP now I'm going to forward the request um, to the JSP so that when the getter is executed after the employee instance is instantiated we will um, simply forward the request to our JSP so from uh, get servlet config we're going to call get servlet context and from get servlet context we're going to ask for the request dispatcher so as soon as we begin typing get request dispatcher and the request dispatcher we're going to give it a handle with the name of our JSP uh, preceded by the slash character uh, so that it is a relative URL relative to our application and the name of our JSP we can see it in the um, tab if you forget or in the uh, project explorer view over on the left hand side you can see the name of the JSP if you forget and then, of course this is case sensitive unless you create alternate URL mappings and there's the close of my string and then on the request dispatcher I'm gonna call uh, forward within the forward method I'm going to pass the current uh, request object and response object. The request object has now been changed to include the employee instance as an attribute on the request object. And I'm also going to pass the current response object. It's expecting um, two of those as those types. Okay, so that should be enough um, to test this. And again, we're just overriding simply. Um, the do get method loading up a simple um, piece of Java code with appropriately named attributes so that our getters and setters will work properly and the expression language can be used most effectively from the request dispatcher we're calling the forward method to forward to our JSP and it's very simple what should next happen when we run this servlet is that we will see the results rendered in a browser when we run the servlet on our JBoss server. Okay, I have an indication that my servlet has not been compiled. It's always a good sanity check. The tool won't let me run it unless it's compiled anyway. It would prompt me to compile the code. But I had an asterisk in the tab and I've disciplined myself over the years to make sure that I save or compile my Java code before I try to run it. In order to run this, simply right click run as oops bad mouse day run on server and we see the build console 
come up as the application is built by JBoss and published to JBoss and the tool switches over to the server console we see the server starting up and what we should expect to see at this point is that the tool will open a browser window and display a label employee number or employee ID and the value current value of that employee number and et voila this is what we see employee ID 123 just like we defined it in our servlet code rather static but it gives us an idea that our JSP our use of the JSP expression language is working as intended notice in the expression language we did not define that the employee instance was to be discovered in the request object we're relying on the server um, the services in on the server to provide or, or to search for that instance and provide it to us in the different areas of scope the page scope the request scope the session scope the application scope so that gives us a quick idea of how to uh, get working with the JSP expression language.